Hey guys, in this video we'll be doing revision on the atomic structure. Let's get right to it. So let's look at this question. An atom of element X is represented as this. So we have the letter X here and then we have two numbers. What are the particles found in the nucleus of atom X? Let's just look at the general structure of the atom again. So the atom consists of three particles at this level. So you have in the middle the nucleus and then you have electrons that are orbiting around the nucleus in shells. So we are still using shells here, we are not going to go into cloud theory. So here we have electrons out here, these are the electrons. So what is in the nucleus then? What is in the center of the atom? The center of the atom has the protons as well as the neutrons. So there are several protons and neutrons depending on what element it is in the center. So that is what is in the nucleus of the atom. So the answer to this question would be we have protons and neutrons. So this is for A. Let's look at B. State the term for the total number of particles. Total number of particles in the nucleus. So we already know we are talking about the total number of protons and neutrons. The number of protons and neutrons added up together, summed together, they are known as the nucleon number. In fact, protons and neutrons together are collectively known as nucleons. So this is a nucleon number. What's the total number of particles found in the nucleus of atom X? Now let's look at this. So here we have two numbers, 17 and 8. You will see that the bigger number, 17, this represents the nucleon number. This is sometimes called the mass number because the nucleon number represents the relative atomic mass of the atom. So this is the nucleon number and at the bottom here we have another number 8. This is the proton number, number of protons. The question is asking for the total number of particles that can be found in the nucleus of the atom of X. So the total number of particles represents the nuclear number. The nuclear number is what is in the center of the atom. So the answer here would be 17. This is 17. Alright, what is the electron structure of the ion X2 minus? So first of all, let's look at the electron structure of X. When you want to look at the electron structure of X, we have to first look at the proton number. Because for a neutral atom of X, the number of protons will be equals to the number of electrons. We must remember this. Whenever we are talking about a neutral atom, the charge is balanced. The number of positive charge must equal to the number of negative charge. That is to say, the number of protons must equal to the number of electrons. Neutrons have no charge and therefore they don't play a role in the charge of a particle. So in this case, if the neutral atom has 8 protons, then it definitely has 8 electrons as well. So for 8 electrons, what's the electron arrangement for 8 electrons? That would be 2 for 8 electrons, it would be in the first shell and then the rest in the second shell which is 6, a remainder of 6. So we have a total of 8 electrons, 2 are placed in the first shell, 6 in the second shell. Now this is 2 minus. What does 2 minus mean? An atom becomes negatively charged when it accepts electrons because once it accepts electrons, it has more electrons than protons. Remember when it was neutral, it is balanced. The number of protons is exactly the same as the number of electrons. However, when an electron is accepted, now we have excess electrons. So that's how we get a charge of 1 minus. So how do we get a charge of 2 minus? It is when we have 2 extra electrons. So for this ion, this ion is formed by taking in 2 electrons. So here plus 2 electrons, plus 2 electrons. After we add two electrons, where will the electrons go? Electrons always move in and out of the outermost shell. This is a very important fact. So we are going into the second shell here. So this will be plus two. It can take two more because the second shell can hold up to eight electrons. Therefore, we will get an electron arrangement of the electron structure will be two, eight. Two in the first shell. 8 in the second shell. Now let's look at E. State the chemical formula for the compound formed between X and aluminium. So we already know X forms 2 minus ion. 
Aluminium forms 3 plus ion. Let's write that down first. So aluminium is a 3 plus ion, it's a cation. And then we have X, which forms an anion with charge 2 minus. So how do we know the formula of the ionic compound that forms between these two elements? We have to write down the number first. So the number of the charge. So this is 3 plus, so we write 3. And 2 minus, so we write 2. So what's going to happen for ionic compounds is we are going to switch places. So you cross and you go 2 and 3. Now we know the number of ions in the compound. Therefore, this compound will have 2 aluminium ions and 3 X ions. So we are talking about a single formula unit. So how do we write this down? Al aluminium, there's 2. And then X, there's 3. So Al2 X3. And this is the chemical formula of the ionic compound that is now let's try the second question. Let's look at this. Element Y has two different types of atoms. So we have this, Y3517 and Y3717. So the first question is, what are isotopes? Now isotopes are, first of all, they are atoms of the same element. As you can see here, it is both Y, Y and Y, the atoms of the same element, which have the same proton number. This makes sense because the number of protons will determine the identity of the element. So if they are the same element, they definitely have the same proton number. However, isotopes have different number of neutrons, or you could say it has a different nucleon number. The difference in the nucleon number is due to the different number of protons. So these are isotopes, such as this. So you can clearly see one is 35 and one is 37. But the number of protons are the same. 17 and 17. So these two are isotopes. Okay, let's look at B. Some calculation here. 75.7% of element Y exists as this, and 24.3% exists as this. Calculate the relative atomic mass of element Y to one decimal place. So when we are taking into account relative atomic mass of elements, of atoms of elements, that have isotopes, we need to take into account the relative abundance of each isotope. So for example, here we have 75.7 of Y exists as this and 24.3 exists as this. So these are the relative abundances of each isotope, each type of atom. Now how do we do this? We actually are taking an average value. So relative atomic mass will be equals to this will be equals to, let's take the first one. So the relative atomic mass, as I mentioned earlier, is reflected by the nuclear number. So we have to take the nuclear number. This is 35. So let's do that. 35 multiplied by the relative abundance. Relative abundance here is 75.7. 75.7. And then we add... The same thing for the other type of atom as well. So we have 37 here. 37 multiplied by the relative abundance, 24.3%. And divide by the total abundance. We are dealing with percentages here. When you total up the relative abundance, you should get 100%. So this is over 100%. And when you key in this calculator, you should get the uh, answer should be 35.5. Relative atomic mass has no unit because it's a relative mass. So 35.5 is the relative atomic mass of atom Y. Now let's go to 3. Element Z, so we have a new element here. Element Z has 7 valence electrons and 4 shells. Identify element Z. So what information can we get from here? If the element has seven valence electrons, this would mean that it belongs to, remember the number of valence electrons will reflect the group number. So if it has seven valence electrons, then it belongs to, if you're learning IGCSC, then it will be group Roman numeral seven. But if you're learning some other syllabus, like uh, the KSSM syllabus, then you will know it as group 17. It is the same thing. It refers to the same group. We are looking at halogens here. So group 7. And then it has four shells. 
when you have four shells, this means the number of shells corresponds to the period number. So if there are four shells, that means it is in period four. Now let's use this and look at our periodic table. So here we have it. Group seven is here, second to last, and period four. So one, two, three, four, here. So we are looking at bromine. And therefore, we know that element Z is actually bromine. This is bromine. Let's look at the next question. Why does element Z behave chemically as a non-metal? Explain your answer in terms of electron transfer. So when we are talking about chemical reactions, chemical reactions involve either the transfer, that is either the loss or the gain of electrons or sharing of electrons. So there's movement of electrons involved. So what determines the chemical behavior of an atom as a metal or non-metal? This depends on whether it is donating electrons or receiving electrons. All metals will donate electrons. They are electropositive. They have a tendency to donate electrons to form cations. Whereas non-metals have a tendency to accept electrons to become anions, negative ions. So here, since Z, we know it has seven valence electrons. How is it going to behave? Is it going to donate seven electrons? No. Rather, it will be more likely to accept one electron. For, we know for sure that bromine does this. Bromine accepts one electron to become a negative ion, one minus ion. So that is exactly the answer because it loses one electron to form Z minus. This is why we say that it behaves chemically as a non-metal rather than a metal. If you're looking for a revision on electrochemistry and other more difficult topics, then I have a video on that as well. I've left the link here in the corner and in the description as well. Please do check it out. If you've learned something from this video, please do help hit the like button. It really, really does help to grow my channel. Thank you for hitting the like button. And if you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one a week. I'll see you in the next video.